Hey, it's Mark Eamon here with my 914 electric car project. Hey, Jack, Brian, and everybody else in EVTV land. A uh, bunch of stuff going on with the project, so I just wanted to give everybody an update. Um, and I'll tell you all about it. So, a little bit about what's going on with my 914 project. Um, I was hoping that the front suspension could handle the weight of the batteries. I figured with the gas tank out of the car and the um, and the spare tire out of the car that the cumulative additional weight of these five sets of four pack batteries would be about 165 pounds and I'd hope it could handle that but it's turned out I don't know if you can see this but over time the front end just got lower and lower and lower and at this point I can't even get a floor jack underneath it. So I stopped driving the car because I thought one pot I'd be one pothole away from uh, having it just drag on the ground. Um, and I did some research and was gonna look for larger torsion bars, but apparently larger torsion bars for the 914, according to Pelican Parts, is completely unobtainium. So they, what they suggested to do was to get some A-arms and uh, from a 911, which by definition have larger torsion bars. Um, and the 911 torsion bars, uh, uh, they're the same for 19, I think it's 68 through a 1984 so a huge swath of cars to pick from and then they race them and you know so a lot of people put in different and larger torsion bars um so here they are i finally got them it took me literally three months to get, get these i guess people like to hold on to their 911s and don't part them out um but three months and 500 bucks later there they are um this one right here needed a new a new joint, so I got one of those too. Um, and we've yet to put them on the car, but in the ensuing three months, my nine, 914 just sat here in the garage. And you know, like Jack says, I think you really just have to do stuff to learn. And then what I learned was that I wired my um, DC to DC converter directly up to the, the soliton actually so it's not going through the shunt so it's not being metered so that's not good and secondly I realized that it's uh, now at this juncture that it actually has a jumper between these two that make it permanently on you, you can make it switchable which it needs to be when the ignition's on and that's what I got a relay here and so that's the project at hand or one of them is to put that this DC to DC converter so it's switchable. But anyway, in the three months the car sat here, that DC to DC converter just, you know, was happily doing its job. And it was pumping in energy into the um, the regular DC battery um, and nonstop for months and months and months. Uh, and so it did two things. <laughs> one, it completely fried my DC battery. So that's a new one I have. Um, and two, it drained down the pack. And... Um, I was pretty alarmed when I discovered the, the voltage of the pack, and but most of the batteries were pretty good. Um, so like they're down around 2.9. I think this one's 2.6. Um, um, this battery here, this one's 3 3.08. So pretty much around the whole pack, numbers like that in the high twos or low threes. Except for this one cell right here. Um, strangely enough, when the lobe was taken off the batteries, um, most of them that were reading like, you know, 2.7 or something went back up to 2.9. Um, this one was reading 1.7 when I took the load off the pack. And it went down. So currently, it's reading uh, 1.3. I think last I checked it. Um, I could try to put the meter on there, but one, I don't think you can read it on this camera, and two, um, I'd have to hold the camera in my mouth and put my two hands to put the, the leads on the terminals, so take my word for it. So, we're going to swap out, luckily, for the design of this car, I had purchased a whole other set of batteries, and there they are over there on the freezer, 
to go in this space right here where the gas tank used to be. But that's a space reserved for when Jack finally figures out how to do air, condi air conditioning. Jack, you have all this space to put the air conditioning in the car um, and heat. So what I'm going to do, and I've already bottom balanced those to 2.74 um, volts, um, is just swap those four out with these four. Um, and um, probably you see what, what those other ones were used for. Uh, I had a, uh, still have it actually, this little um, cigarette lighter adapter and then it goes into an AC adapter and um, use it to power credit card machines and whatever at wine festivals. And it works great for that and I'm pretty sure I can pull this one back from the brink of death and get that one cell to come back up. Um, we'll see. Um, but it's just for emergency backups at festivals so that'll be fine. Um, but, you know, you live and learn, so essentially I've potentially completely damaged one cell and totally fried my DC battery and learned that, hey, the DC to DC converter is switchable. You can turn it on and off, and you should. Um, so those are all lessons uh, learned from my 9, uh, 914 project. Uh, so we'll hopefully get those new A-arms in there and... Um, and that'll take care of the, the car riding so low and um, get all my pack properly bottom balanced and um, we should be good to go. So here's the poor man version of Jack's battery lab. This is the cluster of four cells that I'm going to replace that one cluster that has the bad cell that has, you know, 1.3 volts. Um, but this is a healthy, happy pack that I've never done anything with. Or as Jack would say, just, you know, stored it away with no special attention, and no temperature control, no nothing. And it uh, was giving me 13.31 volts for all four cells. And so I need to take those down close to um, 2.9 or something so I can then bottom, bottom balance them. Um, so I have cells wired up to a cigarette lighter threesome pack and then a DC to AC converter and then a trusty good, good old inefficient 100 watt lamp. Um, and so I'll be taking my time getting these down close to the rest, rest of the pack um, so I can bottom balance them with everything. So here's my wife's plug-in Prius which replaces that uh, beautiful BMW that I was gonna convert but she got tired of waiting so we have the plug-in Prius which is really a beautiful car really delightful to drive and performs really well. I wish it had a bigger traction pack than it does, but that's what you got. Or what you get, maybe in the future. Um, here is my poor man's version of Jack's battery lab after I took down the this pack of four. Um, hoping they'd all arrive at the bottom at the same time, but of course they don't. So, uh, cell 1, 2, and 4 are at about 2.83 volts. Cell 3 here is at 3.32 volts to start with. So, we have uh, a long or 12 foot extension cables to... the power lab which I bought from Jack and Brian and have it connected to the 12 volt battery on the 914 and it's I just wanted to leach off some of the power that the power lab is dumping into the 12 volt um, and there's a long story about that so I have that connected back to the uh, DC to AC converter 
I mean, DC uh, to three cigarette lighter converter and a DC to AC converter and a basic lamp. Um, and so that's what's going on right now. I'm trying to leach down that three point uh, three two or whatever it was the uh, volt cell back down to join his brothers at 2.83 so that's what we're doing um, and then we gotta get to the other 50 some batteries who are about 2.9 volts get them all happy at 2.8 2.83 and then we should be good to go to charge them all up there you go so I got the power lab 8 going and just in case I start to build up too much of a charge in my new 12 volt DC battery, I have this um, DC to AC converter hanging off here. And it's got a little fan running, so it's pulling a little bit of energy. But if I really need to um, dump some energy, I can just do that. So. Like I said, kind of rookie league compared to Jack's setup. Um, and I put on 12 foot extensions on the cables they provide. I checked with them, they said this would be fine. So I can reach, leave the power lab back there in the back of the car and reach up here to all the batteries. So currently pulling them down. I set it for 2.7 volts, and it seems like when they settle, they settle to around 2.73, which is fine with me if they all do the same thing. Um, the one thing is, with these um, GBS batteries, is they have the, the poles on, on opposite ends. You know, one pole on this end, one pole on that end. So, to get to them, it's easy in the front, uh, the, the way they're arranged in the front, and also in the rear trunk. But these suckers here in the middle of the car, I'm having to take take them apart. And luckily, I put a strap on the middle battery, so I'm have to pull all these out so I can get to both ends of them to bottom balance them. So that's the project uh, currently underway. So we can get this whole pack bottom balanced that, that I didn't do in the first place. And put it back together and charge it up. Got the, like I said, a brand new 12 volt battery over there. And, uh, and then realized, you know, we're going to put a, a switch, put a relay in for the, um, to turn on and off the um, DC to DC converter when the ignition is turned on and or off. Um, so all that's uh, going to happen. And then this sucker will be back on the road. Oh, the main thing is. Got 911A arms, which come standard with uh, with um, 19 millimeter torsion bars, whereas the 914 has 17 millimeter torsion bars. And these I'm, are rumored to bolt right into the car, and hopefully the 19 millimeter torsion bars will do the trick. Um, if they don't. It's a lot, lot easier to get bigger torsion bars for 911 since there's a bazillion of them and people race them and all that. Um, where in the 914s, I've been told that the bigger torsion bars are unobtainium. So there you go. Here's my little rookie setup, but it seems to be working well. I've already uh, got all those battery, the battery bank that's on top of the freezer over there, all of them down to 2.73 um, volts. And we'll get the rest of the 52. Okay, we're approaching a critical moment in any EV owner's life. <clears throat> we are on the last of 56 batteries and three days worth of work to bottom balance to 2.7, but they pretty instantly bounce back up to about 2.73 or 2.74 is where we're all all wind up um, but that's pretty good that's the last battery notice my very stylish 
shop light, and a beverage. Got to have a beverage. Um, and those, like I said, 12 foot extensions I put on the Power Lab 8. So I could leave the Power Lab 8 back here hooked up to. Um, Hooked up to the to the 12 volt battery with its short little cables, and then just have those 12 foot extensions so I can essentially run the run the discharge to where the batteries are without moving them. Um, like I said, the, these uh, GBS batteries have the, the terminals on terminals on on both sides, um, so some of them. Proved a challenge to get to. There we are at 2.71. So any second now we'll get the welcomed deep, 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 um, meaning that uh, it's done. Um, and then we'll charge up this pack and never have to do this again. Uh, back here to the car. You got everything cleaned up. And all those, these uh, batteries have these little caps that come on them, which are kind of cool. They're purple. Um, that just uh, covers up any of the connections. Um, and we're just waiting for the deep, 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 deep. Should happen any second now. Because they go pretty quick once they get down here. Oh, it is. I got 2.7 on my meter. Of what? Hey, Chilean. What are you doing? Filming you if you would stop walking around. Why are you filming me? Stop it. I'm going to put something on EVTV about this car, and I'm bottom balancing the final cell out of 56 cells. So any second, that thing that's back there will go deep, deep, deep. And beat the heck out of our ears? Not, not the heck, just a really pleasant dee dee dee. Any What's second What's with now. the dog? Is I don't know, that's Bonnie's lamp out of her office, isn't that funny? I'm using it for a shop light. Is that Hector something? That looks like Hector. It does. Excuse me? Hmm? Daddy's filming something. Come on, Power Lab. Any second now. It's a waiting game. But while we're waiting, there's my wife's lovely new plug in Prius that she really, really loves. And it's got something we're all familiar with. J1772 connection. And you hear it makes that funny sound like the Starship Enterprise. Oh, there it is. That's a completely fake sound. Dit, dit, dit. Finally at last. I don't think you can read it. But it says done. Like, Drum roll, please! So <laughs> full of tomatoes. Walking down, uh, walking on the sidewalk. Uh, remember, well, one of the little ones caught was behind. So one of them said, catch up! <laughs> okay, so here's the uh, 914 with the low riding front end. Um, it's all charged up. All the uh, batteries are ba bottom balanced. Let's see what we got going on. Hope you can read this in the video. Looks like we got 179.4 amp hours. Um, which I was kind of hoping for more. They're 200 amp hour cells. Let's switch over here and see. 
voltage. We charged, I charged it to 200 volts and it settled back down to 192.8. I'll have to do the math, but I think that divided by 56 is around 3.56 volts per, per cell. But anyway, interesting story. I took the 914, and we had a really severe thunderstorm uh, the other night. And of course, after the kid, my child and uh, wife were asleep at, of course, midnight or so when the car was done charging, I took it for a spin around the next neighborhood over. And I got halfway around the loop. And I started smelling extreme electrical fire. I mean, I was sure that the car was on fire, something fierce. And so I was just trying to get home, and I kept being amazed that the car was still running. And I finally rounded the last bend in that neighborhood to come upon two um, electrical service trucks that were replacing a uh, transformer which had exploded in the storm. And the whole place was just reeked of, of smoke. But um, luckily not this guy. So there she is. I have uh, still these A-arms to put on. So now she's all up and running. I can take it to the local um, um, mechanical shop and have them put those on and hopefully get that front end up back up where she belongs. Still have to weatherproof the engine compartment. Um, so that's yet to be done. It's an air-cooled uh, motor before, so it has vents, um, which are not really happy for electronical things. But um, there you go. That's one of the projects, and the tachometer still doesn't work, and, you know, it's a 40-year-old car. Ongoing things. Okay. Uh, update you after it gets back from the shop. So, I've been charging the car with this uh, pigtail that goes from a twist lock to a regular Edison 110 from my charger. And on the 110 circuit, um, set to oh, about 18 amps or 19 amps. Um, let's just face it, it took a long time to charge after the bottom balance. I think. 22 hours or so is not exaggerating. So, tomorrow morning, I'm having an electrician come and put in a 30 amp 220 plug right here. And handily, this is right at the back of my garage. So, <clears throat> don't have to run much cable or anything. And I could just back the car in and plug it in there. I already have the Manzanita that can do um, 30 amps 220. So that should cut down the charging time significantly. Um, and like I said, tomorrow morning he'll put that plug in and we'll be good to go. I did have a couple problems today operating the car in that I had to uh, turn the ignition on several times and when I put the computer on it later it said it was, run it was throwing errors of um, not sufficient voltage, not 12 voltage volts, um, which is weird because, like I said, this is an absolutely brand new 12 volt battery. And I tested it and it was reading uh, 12.38, I think. So I don't know what's up with that. Um, of course, once the computer was on it, I turned it on and off five times and it couldn't get it to reproduce it. But isn't that just the way with cars? All right, more to come. Like I said, um, the next plan is to take it off to the shop. Uh, to get those A-arms put on it and hopefully the sagging front end back up where it needs to be. Um, and we can run around and see why the uh, lack of 12 volts is happening. All right, talk to you later. Okay, here she is all back from the shop uh, with the new 911 uh, a-arms and torsion bars riding at the proper height, um, driven ar around a bit, and we'll see if that uh, those new two torsion bars are enough for the um, additional, I think it's about 160 pounds of weight in the front, 
Um, and as with all things, when you're converting an old VW or some old car, uh, the problem with the uh, electric car is not the electric part of the car. It is the 40-year-old car part of the car. So I have a new 12-volt battery in here, and it keeps draining down. Now, why is that? Well, somewhere in the system of the 40-year-old car is a leak to ground. And I got a clue one day. I um, put in this switch, which I don't know if you can see in this light, but the, you spin this little thing and it turns the, it connects the, the, the um, negative side of the battery back to the car. And they make these for a reason, I guess, for vintage cars that you store for a long time that you don't want to have the battery attached to the car because the car will suck the battery dry. Um, and I put that in and a really curious thing happened. In addition to the regular pole on the battery, there's another pole there where I had a couple of things. One, the DC to DC converter, and two, um, uh, a lead to the, um, the Soliton. And the third thing is a little teeny wire that goes to this additional LED brake light that I put on the back of the car. Um, this car being so low and not having that additional brake light in the back where most modern cars do. Um, so a very curious thing happened. When I disconnect the main negative pole by spinning this little guy right here, but have this one little negative lead to this little teeny wire that is the negative of the LED light. Look what happens when I connect that circuit. Voila! The light turns on. Isn't that weird? So the only path to negative for the brake lights. Now, this brake light, of course, is connected um, in the rear to the brake lights. One of these wires get connected right there to the brake lights. So, clearly there's a path of completed circuit with the brakes not on, enough to power an LED, but not the old-fashioned incandescent lights. So, an ongoing saga, I've ordered a new brake light switch from Pelican Parts, and hopefully when I put that in, it'll stop this phenomenon and end the endless drain on the 12-volt battery. Um, so it's just funny, this, um, most of the time I find that I'm working on the 40-year-old car and hardly any time working on the electric car. All right, we'll see.